Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome to this introduction to the Dark Planet Macro extension for Halion. Now, macros can seem like a little bit of a black art. It's not always immediately obvious what they're doing, but by the end of today's video, you're going to completely understand how Dark Planet works and how you can best use it in your own songwriting and sound design. If you enjoy this video, check out the Patreon and YouTube channel member links below. It's an awesome way to help support my channel carry on making videos like this. So I've dialed up one of the stock presets, it's called Wet Plus Wet, and it sounds like this. What exactly are we hearing there? What's Dark Planet contributing to that sound? Well, the answer might seem a little surprising. If we have a look at the program tree for this preset, it's actually very straightforward. We have a single layer containing a single zone, and then we've got some effects units on the, on the layer bus. This is giving you a big clue as to Dark Planet's true nature. It's not a sound engine in its own right, it's simply a collection of effects. If you have a look at the interface, you can actually map components or clusters of controls directly into the effects units. On the top left-hand corner of the interface, we have four controls together that go to comprise a distortion unit. Now at the moment, it's in bitrate reduction mode, but if I flip this over to tube uh, distortion mode instead, See the label just changed? These four controls here are the pre-distortion insert effect. There it is. Then we have a filter section in the middle. This is the morph filter. A second distortion, this is called post-distortion. And then a couple of modulation units underneath, either of which can be active at the moment. And in this particular preset, we have a phaser. Here's the phaser. But if I click the, the type over to flanger, then we would be using this module instead. So the Dark Planet macro is basically a skin that collects together these five effects units and presents them in a very friendly and attractive user interface. Just to drive home that this macro is um, a, a multi-effects unit, what I'm basically going to do is disable all insert effects across the entire Halion instance. I can do this from a control up at the top of the interface, switch off all insert effects. So I'm going to press that little button. Now I'm going to press a key and turn some of these controls and nothing I do in the interface is going to have a blind bit of difference to the layer. Re-engage the insert effects and the dark planet springs back into life again. Okay, so now that we understand that, let's try to figure out what it's actually doing. I'll reload the preset as it came out of the box and we'll go through each of these components one by one. Firstly, the pre-distortion so-called because this distortion basically happens before we get to the filter section. We're going to go into the filter section, that's going to have some kind of sculpting effect on the sound, and then we're going to come out and go into the post distortion. It's the reason why those two modules are called what they are. We can enable this cluster of controls from this little button in the middle. And now that it's on, I have one of four distortion types dialed up. So at the moment I'm using rate reduction, we've got bit reduction, clipping and tube distortion. The bottom two will make this label in the bottom left hand corner say reduction and the top two will make it say distortion. But it's really doing the same thing. They're all saturation units. They're just using different um, methodologies. Let's start off with the tube distortion type, my personal favorite of the four because it generates quite a warm effect or a warm distortion. We have a mix knob. I'll set it to 50-50 and start off with no distortion at all. I'm going to have to control the gain as I turn this distortion up because it will get louder. Lovely, lovely, warm, rich distortion. If I turn that off, turn the mix all the way down to zero. Now this component isn't doing anything. It's basically on like a dry bypass. So after we've come out of the pre-distortion and it's done its job, I'm going to disable that now. We go into the filter unit. We have a morphing filter here. What's actually going on is that we've got two separate filter units. Up at the top of the interface, we have, it's actually called filter shape B, but it's at the top. We have high pass and band reduction or notch filters. Drop the little arrow down and you can see the options. The easiest one to demo because it's so visually obvious what's going on is band reduction. So we'll start there. I choose the band reduction 24. That's a 24 decibels per octave 
notch filter. So it's quite, it's going to be quite a steep um, notch. And I'm going to engage all of the upper filter by moving the morph control up to the top of the matrix. So basically now the upper filter is in full control. The lower filter isn't doing anything. We can ignore it for the moment. If you have a look in the spectrum analyzer, you'll see the notch filter in use. Here we go. Here's the notch. And I can control that cutoff point uh, by moving the cutoff control to the left or right. So that's this little control on the horizontal axis. I'll let it settle down, the notch will re-establish itself. You can also see actually the phasers having a, uh, an effect on the sound. I'll just turn the phaser off for the moment. And here's my notch coming back. In high pass mode, we get a high pass filter, which means we're going to throw all the low frequencies away. Down at the bottom of the matrix, filter A or the lower filter takes control. And this is a low pass and band pass filter. So we'll start with low pass mode first. It's gonna throw high frequencies away. And then we've got a band pass filter, which is basically going to make a little mountain or hill. There we go. So you can always tell where the cutoff frequency of a filter is visually, because it's around about here, what, 2,800 ish. Oh, it's actually a little bit higher than that 3.2 kilohertz. So the value in the morph is telling you exactly what this cutoff frequency is. Now, as is always the case with these Hallian macros, you can see a lot more information about what's actually going on behind the scenes. So taking a note of that 3251, we jump over to the edit screen and do a manual visual inspection of the morph filter. We'll be able to see that it has a cutoff frequency and there it is. It's actually being very slightly adjusted. You can see that the sphere control down here is actually mapped into this knob, which is why this number is very slightly different from the 3251 that you see in the primary interface. That's a Hallian thing, let's not worry too much about that just now, but it's just to reiterate that the controls behind the scenes, the values in these uh, FX units, directly map into those controls that you see in the Dark Planet interface. Here's the morph control down at the bottom, for instance, if I set that back to the middle and jump back over to the macro, there's the morph control changed. So now that we've seen the filters in extreme mode, in other words, at the top and bottom of the matrix, pretty obvious that you can basically blend those two together. That's what the morphing filter does. We can actually disable the entire filter with this little control down at the bottom, and then you can shut the entire thing down if you want. Then we have a second post filter distortion, identical functionally to the pre filter distortion, the controls are kind of mirror imaged, but it is exactly the same kind of effect. Both of these um, effects units, pre-distortion and post-distortion. Here's the distortion folder and in there, there's the distortion instance. And that would have all of the same controls there you can see. There's our four distortion types that we could choose from. Get rid of that. So there's nothing complicated about these at all. It's just that they've all been wrapped together and presented in this intuitive interface that kind of ties everything nicely together. Okay, now onto the modulation section. We've got two options to choose from, phaser and flanger. All we're doing when we flick this um, type option is we're choosing one of these two FX units down here. Here's the phaser FX with all of its controls. Each one of these is implicitly mapped into the macro. That's what macros do. They provide a, a friendly user interface to this otherwise dry and fairly unintuitive um, environment behind the scenes. It's much more friendly working with macros and it lets you dial up pretty great sounds very quickly. Now, speaking of this, let's say you're doing sound design and you want to use this Dark Planet skin, this suite of FX, FX units. Is that actually available to you? Well, it is, but funnily enough, not quite as easily as you might imagine. If we go back over to the load page, if we search for an initial preset, you're not going to find one. Most macros do have an init option, as you can see down below. Lots of them have default settings that are basically going to give you a fairly generic 
basic set of controls out of the box. Dark Planet doesn't. And the wet plus wet preset that I showed you earlier is actually a pretty good template to use because it's very small and there's not a lot going on. So I'm going to show you how to very quickly create yourself your own initialized template so you can use this in your own sound design. Now we're only interested in the Dark Planet synth layer, so we're basically going to extract the layer information out of this program. That means we're not going to be getting any of the multi-delay or reverb effects. That's outside of the interest of Dark Planet. We're not bothered about that stuff. But there's one effect in this particular layer that I don't think you necessarily want as part of your initialized default sound. So what I'm going to do is select the synth zone, head into the edit screen, and in the modulation matrix, there's a routing that I'm going to remove. This pitch envelope into oscillator one waveform is providing that effectively filter sweep effect. I'm going to control click on the pitch envelope to oscillator one waveform to take that away. Now we've got a pretty generic sound. So at this point, I'm going to right click on this layer. I'm going to save layer as Dark Planet, oops, init Dark Planet. Depending on how vigorous you are with your tagging, you might want to fill in some of this information. I filled in some basic values here. Now I can say OK. And that layer is now available for me to use in any program that I'm creating. It's also worth bearing in mind that Dark Planet isn't tied in any way to the zone that you use. I'm going to load up a different program to demonstrate this. The big dirty pad is a sample based program. So here you can see the Dark Planet macro has been applied to these samples underneath. And if we have a look in the mapping screen, there's all of the samples being mapped, but it's simply this multi effects unit. Here's my cluster of five effects being applied to this pad based sound. Let's have a quick listen to this one. Pretty glorious it is too. And you're not even restricted to one instance of Dark Planet per program. The Crude Carrier preset. So these are all stock Dark Planet presets that are basically just part of my Halion installation. This preset uses two instances of Dark Planet. The first one is, is a synth zone, and that component of the program sounds like this. And the second layer is also a Dark Planet instance, but this time it's a sample based instance. We add those two layers together. We get the overall program. So in terms of using this for your own purposes, just bear in mind it's the FX suite that you're really thinking about. When you want that kind of distortion laden morphing filter sound, then you get this great interface, this friendly interface for free. It would be nice if there was an initialized layer that came with the Dark Planet expansion, but there isn't. And as I've shown you, it's incredibly easy to create your own. From that point onwards, you've got access to this pretty awesome interface and this fantastic sounding instrument. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Please hit like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber to my channel. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks very much.